Mark didn't just want to be famous, he wanted to be historic. He was so young. This idea of move fast and break things. We were empowering people. Overthrowing dictators. It really has created a new reality. I don't think they saw what was coming at all. Cambridge Analytica, the Arab Spring. Fake news is connecting the world back. Mr. Zuckerberg, are you too powerful? That was the trailer for the Sky feature documentary, Zuckerberg, King of the Metaverse. And this is Factual America. I'm your host, Matthew Sherwood. Each week I watch a hit documentary and then talk with the filmmakers and their subjects. In January 2004, Mark Zuckerberg embarked on a coding journey that would change the world. Two decades later, we can see the impact that one man and his company, Facebook, now called Meta, have had on all our lives. Join us as we talk with award-winning and BAFTA-nominated director Nick Green about the challenges he faced in discovering what drives one of the world's most powerful and wealthiest men. Does Zuckerberg fully understand the impact he continues to have on society? It is hard to tell. Zuckerberg, king of the metaverse, delves into themes of power, privacy, mistrust, and disinformation shining a light on an inscrutable man whose influence shapes the future of democracies around the world. Stay tuned. Nick Green, welcome to Factual America. How are things with you? Oh, very nice. Thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, I'm really flattered that you've asked me. Well, we're flattered that you've agreed to join us. Um, as our listeners and viewers uh, will probably will have known from the intro, we're talking about Zuckerberg, King of the Metaverse. Uh, it's currently on Sky here in the UK and all the Sky territories. Uh, we talked earlier, just before starting this recording, that it, Fremantle's picked it up, so I'm sure it's going to be showing somewhere near you, somehow, some way, very soon. So, congratulations. Uh, great to have you on. Um, as you may or may not be aware, we usually start off by asking our filmmakers what the film's all about. It does seem pretty... You know, the, the title, it's, it's, it is what it says on the tin, Zuckerberg, King of the Metaverse. But, uh, you know, and he's become one of these one-name figures, hasn't he? Uh, but uh, what, what, is, what is your film trying, what is your film about? <laughs> well, look, I mean, what we were trying to do, and I, I you know, I, I hope we were sort of successful. I mean, the this, this, this film was sort of incredibly challenging on a number of levels we'll talk about that later but the, yeah. but i think the the idea of the film was just to sort of try and look under the bonnet look under the hood of of you know who the sort of main designer who the main man behind facebook mm. and instagram and various other you know well-known brands who, who he actually is what he stands for mm. you know where he comes from what you know basically who this guy is and and i think yeah. uh, you know there's obviously been many facebook documentaries being made Right. in the past and and obviously you know what we were trying to do is uh, to a certain extent try and avoid that and look at sort of the person's mm. motivations behind it and get people to try and talk talk to that so we were trying to sort of make a film about about the man himself yeah and i think so that, i think that's a very good point because we've had some of those documentaries the filmmakers on we've had the great hack uh filmmakers yeah. that's all about cambridge analytica Mm. Um, I have had forgotten. I'd even ri written a film review of uh, the Social Dilemma, which came out, which kind of yeah. deals with some of these issues. Um, I, I think even one of the subjects. On, I mean, there's a guy. One of your subjects is in every one of these docs. I have to say, oh, which one? There's, there, yeah, it's, so I'm afraid there's a couple, probably. Yeah, there. But there's the one who's the uh, venture. Roger capitalist. McNamee. Yeah, I think that's him. The one the older guy, right? Who's the, the uh, older guy? Yes, yeah. The, the early, the early investor who's just become a a sort of you know poacher turned game gamekeeper or gamekeeper turned poacher yeah. whichever around it is. i think he makes a full-time career now of appearing on docs and news programs and stuff <laughs> like that but uh yeah. you know <laughs> but to, to 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 get back to your point it isn't you know we're not we're not talking about the ill effects of social media or trying to get all this stuff it's it's about it is about the man the mogul the dictator mm. whatever you want to call him mm. and what drives yeah, that's that right break? I, and 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 you know what? It, it, I, it, I mean, it, it, gosh, it was hard. It was it it was so hard. And and you know, I mean, I, I'm sure some people would still feel that um, 
that we should have worked harder and maybe we should have sort of got a bit more of a sort of psychology psychological profile right, but right. but it's unbelievably difficult i mean you know he's he, you know if you sort of i mean the two sort of gods of our social media world if you like a uh, uh, sort of elon musk and, and mark zuckerberg and you know mm. one you know is is everywhere spouting opinions for right. you know for, yeah. for, for about everything and and of course the other is is very very guarded and, and speaks in sort of 30 second um sound bites that seem to be sort of via curated house trained <laughs> journalists and <laughs> and like who is this guy i mean like you know you know after you know it's it's really interesting because when you compare the sort of man now to, to to how he was as a sort of teenager early 20s guy right. when they were just as, as i think one of the contributors said you know they they were all sort of like guys in their 20s and they were having a great time and they didn't know that what they shouldn't be saying to journalists they didn't know they right. you know they didn't sort right. of they didn't they weren't sort of house trained in that way yeah. and um and now obviously there's these businesses are just worth billions and billions and billions and and you know they have battalions of sort of pr people behind them i'm sure um and everything is just curated toward to, to within an inch of its life so you get the message everything is just on message and what people really think of mark zuckerberg you know in recent years very very hard to, very very yeah. hard to gauge very very hard to gauge I mean, inscrutable seems like the perfect term for the for the fella. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe one way of looking at it, one one way your film does explore it is, um, um, you know, ex explores it chronologically in that uh, you forget how much his image and perceptions of him have ev changed and evolved, you know, over the yeah. last sort of twenty years. So he's this whiz kid, curiosity. I think it's not unfair to describe him a hero, at least in one sense of the definition, in terms of social network and everything's going on. And then you've got, then he becomes a villain. And maybe yeah, he's I now, mean, think, you know, he's a, even a survivor mode now. Yeah, totally. And I think there's, you know, that's the sort of natural drama that, that obviously sort of lends itself to a story. You know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge sort of pendulum shift. You know, it's a, it's a huge change, as you say, from... Um, somebody who, you know, in the archive is sort of wet behind the ears and, and you know, looks like he's... <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're doing I mean, keg stands in the office, right? Yeah. They're, they're ro rolling around on... I mean, it's like... Yeah, great fun, right? I mean, yeah, it's everyone's stereotype of Silicon Valley of at least a certain era, Google, all those, they're playing yes. ping pong and, of, and stuff. And of course, know? the most, you know, the more the more successful any business comes, the more sort of scrutiny it, it, it you know, it attracts. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know... I mean, what, what we were sort of quite interested in, I think, was just the sort of origins. And I mean, I was I'm really sort of fascinated by the sort of Peter Thiel character. And, you know, right. obviously, you know, the Peter Thiel is, is obviously, you know, a reasonably sort of well-known part of the sort of Facebook story. Um, and he has this sort of interesting sort of parallel narrative with 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 Facebook. And we, we, we interviewed this terrific um, writer, Max Chafkin, who. Yeah. He's the biographer of 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 Peter Thiel, and mm. I mean, you know, I think he probably had a little bit of a fight with um, the publisher's lawyers to try and get that book over the line finally, because he's <laughs> quite a powerful guy. But he's, um, but but Peter Thiel is obviously an you know an arch disruptor, and the fact that he mm. saw something in Mark Zuckerberg, you know, at a time right. when there were dozens and dozens and dozens of these sorts of networking kind of websites that were trying to get going, Thiel saw something in Zuckerberg, you know. A, a sort of if you like a sort of it seems like a kindred spirit really you know that right. sort of shared idea that you could take something could shake it up and you can you know you can break the mold I, I think he liked that and I think that he sort of became um you know he became a sort of mentor and obviously an investor in, in Zuckerberg and I think they spent quite a bit of time together right from the the early days and then obviously they sort of went in their own sort of directions but they keep looping back you know the whole Trump side of the story and all this kind of stuff. And, well, I, and some... I, yeah, no, I think that's a very interesting point because don't we, um, it's not one that at least I have not seen previously um, uh, played up very much, this connection with Peter Thiel. I mean, obviously people know he was an early mm. investor and well, first, mm. if not the first, but um you know, it's 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 funny because Facebook, depending on which, uh, well, especially if you're in the U.S., which media you're listening to or watching, I mean, you know, 
in 2020, Facebook was behind suppressing a lot of news that would have been potentially helpful for Trump. But yet, there is this interesting connection to Teal, and Mm -hmm. it's almost... Is it, is it almost like Zuckerberg is sort of beyond politics in a way? He's or did someone in your someone in your uh, film say he's almost? It's all about Zuckerberg. That's his politics. Yeah, totally, totally. It's it's. A, I mean, that's what that was. What that sort of opinion basically sort of stated. It was that is. It was this idea that you know, you know, his single interest is is. You know, I mean, obviously, you, you have to sort of assume that he's interested in his family because he seems to be sort of quite a good family man in this sort of right. stuff. But, yeah. but beyond that, it, it is Facebook. It's the survival of Facebook, and it's it's um, you know, it's uh, you know, and it, it's keeping it growing. It's keep keeping people sort of engaged on the platforms so that he can um, monetize their 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 interest in sort of people around the world. So, so no, his his politics are very much sort of Facebook. Um, and I sort of understand that as a sort of um, as, as a way of sort of seeing the world. I mean, you know, he, he he sort of had dinner with, you know, Donald Trump. Well, Donald Trump was in the presidency because clearly, you know, uh, Trump could have done all sorts of damage to Facebook had he sort of chosen to. So he had to right. play politics there. You know, he obviously was great friends with friends, maybe not friends, but 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 um, he had sort of alliances with the sort of Barack Obama, um, the sort of. Biden administration is quite interesting um, because they they seem to be sort of like sniffing each other's bottoms without doing a great deal of damage to each other. But but he's he plays politics, you know, to, to purely for the benefit of Facebook, I think, mm. um, you know, goodness knows who he voted for in the last election. I would have thought he's a bright guy, so he probably would have voted for Biden. But you never know. Um, yeah. I mean, like you said, it's so inscrutable. I mean, let's give credit. Yeah. I mean. Whatever people, and I think probably when you were going around doing this project, you you, you f- discovered that uh, he's like a lightning rod, isn't he? I mean, people have very strong views about Zuckerberg one way or the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. give him credit, he's built this amazing, I mean, depending on how you view life and your values and everything, but he has built this amazingly successful well, I, company, and yeah, he's I mean, all I, I about mean, trying to protect it. I, I, I totally agree. And, and yeah. you know, I mean... Uh, uh, I think that it's next next month or something is the 20th anniversary. So 20 years of of running a business, growing a business, and and actually sticking with it. I mean, the whole sort of what's interesting about him in the sort of world of sort of tech is that yeah. you know he didn't sell up. He didn't yeah. you know he didn't just take his you know billions and you know live on a yacht moored off the sort of coast of Capri. I mean, he's <laughs> you know he's absolutely sort of dug in and and he's not going anywhere i don't think he yeah. wants to go I and mean, nobody sort of expressed any sort of thoughts that he might one day cash in his chips and leave mm. i mean i think this is very much his in that respect i think you've got to you've got to admire him i mean you know he's a, he's an extraordinary survivor and he as you say he's built this sort of tool that um you know everybody has sort of touched at some point in their life and i think you can always see that the measure of somebody's success when you sort of mention a single name mm. you know as you said you know the zuckerberg word is yeah. um is extraordinarily powerful and can only sort of and only yeah. you know you you know that you're only talking about one person there's only one person you're talking about so so no i mean i, I do sort of admire him in in, in huge in huge ways in, in many ways rather but i but i do think that um yeah i mean i, I i'm not sure that the world he's ended up sort of creating has has um bettered mankind i mean in 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 my opinion and i think you know you know that's worth challenging and that's why i think we sort of wanted to sort of you know just sort of kick the hornet's nest a little bit in the film and just sort of and just put that under the lens a little bit um because i think these are you know these are complicated times i mean at one point we sort of had the story about the fact that you know this year 2024 um, is obviously, I think there's something like, oh, God knows how many elections, or 50 elections or democratic elections this year. And, you know, and Facebook will be an active participant in pretty mm-hmm. well all of those, if not all of those. And yeah. um, and I think, you know, how Facebook is curated and engineered mm-hmm. should be of interest to everybody. You know, mm-hmm. can you sort of trust the sort of information that you're getting? Um, should you be able to trust it? Should you just, you know, mm. should you get any of your sort of, you know, politics through Facebook? I mean, I don't, right. you know, I don't know, but I mean, uh, he's certainly sort of changed the narrative with with, with with politics. And I think this year, you know, m- more than any other, you know, we've got to be really careful with how fragile our democracies are. And, um, 
and in my opinion, I'm not sure he has. Uh, you could probably uh, try to use my words carefully here, but you know, but in my opinion, I'm not sure he has been particularly careful with mm. looking after our democracies um, in the past. Um, so I think we, you know, so it's it's a it's a key time to to, to be doing the film, and well, it makes him even more sort of interesting and yeah. even more powerful, really. I think that's. A, I do want to actually follow up on that, but I think this is a good point to give our listeners and viewers a, an early break. So we'll be right back yeah. with Nick Green, the award-winning director of Zuckerberg, King of the Metaverse, currently showing on Sky here in the UK and coming your way if it hasn't already. You're listening to Factual America. Subscribe to our mailing list or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or X to keep up to date with new releases or upcoming shows. Check out the show notes to learn more about the program, our guests, and the team behind the production. Now back to Factual America. Welcome back to Factual America. I'm here with Nick Green, the award-winning director of Zuckerberg, King of the Metaverse, currently showing on Sky TV here in the UK and its territories, and it will be coming your way soon. Do, do check it out. Um, so, Nick, we've been talking about, you raised the point about all these elections. I think the figure is at least around half the world's population is going to be uh -huh. voting in Democratic elections this year. Mm -hmm. um, other films, but certainly yours as well, show the impact that Facebook has had and continues to have on uh, our politics. And I think this gets to this point. I, I think it, it comes out in your film, you're alluding to it, you, you, at least in your opinion, is this view that maybe he hasn't quite cottoned on to how much of an impact Facebook really has in terms of uh, these things. I mean, isn't it, because it's not just about the business model he's created, this tool that he created many, now almost 20 years, 20 years ago, it's not just about capturing our data. It is, and that's not what advertisers and now politicians are interested. They want, they want the ability to sort of manipulate and predict our behavior. And that's what yeah. they learn from what we do on things like Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there was a there's a really so, so um, yeah, I mean, we 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 uh, we interviewed a sort of couple of very interesting people about this. Um, yeah. I mean, they're unbelievable. I mean, you know, one of the sort of extraordinary sort of tools that sort of Facebook has is the ability to be able to sort of find people, mm. basically, that um, advertisers, you know, politicians. Um, uh, you know what what to find so i mean so there's a somebody sort of referred to this sort of very very clever sort of feature where basically if you go online and you buy a you know and i buy a yeah. donald trump hat or something you know and I, um i can see in a donald trump hat yeah you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> can you <laughs> may no i'm just joking <laughs> make america great again you know i can you yeah, no, exactly, you know yeah. yeah just supposing i bought a you know exactly a, a for hypothet trump hypothetically hat. let's say hypothetically uh, yeah then obviously what what the, what the facebook tool can do and what pe what the trump you know army want is yeah. the ability to be able to find sort of um lookalikes so basically yeah. they'll sort of find sort of nick green lookalikes around the sort of country they would similar profile you know race age uh interests friendship groups and this sort of stuff and they'll right. then stick donald trump hats as an advert in front of those people yeah. So it's an incredibly sort of it's an incredibly sort of, you know, highly um, focused tool. And it's it gives people the ability to actually sort of search for their sort of customers. Yeah. Um, and it's great if, if you're selling shoes. That's fantastic. But right. if you're selling ideas, um, then, but you know, then it gives people, you know, with those ideas, an incredibly sort of strong tool just to be able to sort of bombard people who are perhaps sort of supple minded or plastic minded to be able to sort of, um, you know, to, to give them information that might be sort of receptive to. So it's incredibly clever. And and look, I mean, it, it's not just Trump, by the way. You know, I mean, it, it's a sort yeah. of, I mean, you know, Obama, uh, you know, started um, doing this, you know, you know, way back when. Um, it's just refined and perfected by the um, by the Trump people, uh, you know, to, to, to a phenomenal. I mean, they, 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 they are, you know, their sort of ability to sort of, get through the sort of resolution um is ex i mean it's extraordinarily powerful and um 
I think the problem, you know, for me, the, the problem with all of this sort of stuff is, and, and it goes back to the algorithm and it goes back to the first that, you know, this is the stuff that sort of Facebook did come up with. Right. Is the idea that um, with a, an algorithm, basically what it, you, one of the, the guys that we interviewed from Facebook sort of talked about this is that when you go onto sort of Facebook, you know, what Facebook is very good at is 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 reading you and then throwing stuff back at you that it might it thinks that you are interested in. Right. So if I'm a Trump supporter, then it will just chuck stuff back at me that is pro Trump. Right. Um, if I'm a Biden supporter, then it's you yeah. know it works the other way. And of course, what it does is it creates this sort of weird echo chamber. And Facebook's not the only organization yeah. that sort of does this. Um, and so what you end up realizing if you're in, in politically engaged and you're on facebook all the time is the whole world must be a trump supporter because that's all i'm seeing right and so what if just suppose um the election doesn't go your way yeah. and somehow the other guy wins you're kind of thinking yeah but in my world everybody's a trump supporter everybody's a biden supporter or whatever and, and all of a sudden that sort of echo chamber that sort of reassurance that you get isn't there and i think it just spurs anger and i think it spurs discontent and um disillusionment with the sort of democratic process i think it's a really you know i, I mean i i personally really fear um the, the role of of facebook and twitter and all of the you know various other sort of yeah. social medias you know um looking forward to across this year i think it's it's a it's a it's it's fragile de democracy and i'm not sure that you know these big billion dollar organizations quite sort of care for democracy in the way that perhaps they should. Yeah. And I think the point you, it, it, and you've got the famous case of supposedly the pump and uh, pump, the Pope endorsing Trump, which was a, it yeah. was fake. Yeah. Uh, but now we're four, eight years on and with AI and everything, yeah. I mean, that's, that, that looked actually positively um, mm. sort of a, uh, crude feeling no nostalgia for those N sorts nostalgia of those whereas yeah. you know you're gonna have you're gonna have someone looking like who knows who it is mm. uh, we'll have taylor swift or somebody out there saying things about some candidate or you know yeah. or even just the all the local election you know all the different yeah. smaller country elections that are going to yeah. be happening and the um exactly but, you just have to hope that the zuckerberg and his to his top engineers are are well braced for this and and, and can sort of weed this stuff out um, and have the inclination to do it. I mean, I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure that it, you know, it, I mean, it was a really interesting year. That you know, that whole sort of, um, you know, that sort of 2016 year. His Annus Horribilis. Um, yeah. You know, I I, I I think he probably is is aware that he, he wouldn't want to repeat that. He wouldn't want another one of those sorts of things. So maybe he's going to, you know, maybe that, you know, he'll maybe it won't be the sort of the, the disaster that that many of us fear it will be. Yeah, but at the same time, or does he learn a different lesson, which is he, he shows up on Congress in 2018 mm. and, you know, these guys, and, and women too, but mostly yeah. men, just ask the yeah. most asinine, stupid yeah. question. They don't have, they, I, I'm not trying to be ageist because believe mm. me, uh, I, I struggle with some technology and I have to get my mm. kids to work the, the remote on the TV and all that stuff, but they just had no clue about what yeah. they what they're really dealing with and in and they asked entry level questions didn't they yeah. i think the, you know part of the you know i mean it was interesting you know we 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 look at the sort of we use the sort of um the trope of the of the um congressional hearings almost right. like sort of chapter headings you know the the, the, right. the you know because i think that basically you know, our sort of thesis for the film was that um you know that, that there are everything that is a, is a sort of problem today that the, the 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 seeds of that disaster was sown right from the beginning you know right from the way that the company was set up holds it move fast break yeah. things you right. know even going back to sort of face mash and the sort of and the slight sort of like casual sort of nature of of dealing with mm. people's um uh, data and pictures and, and and that sort of stuff I and mean, that's what a lot of people sort of told us yeah. um and i think that the, you know yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm waffling a bit now. Um, but but, it, it, but no, I but think I think you're getting to a point where I mean it, that did also come up in one of the hearings, and um, mm -hmm. maybe not done well, or maybe it was. But you definitely had one congressman, uh, I think it was, who basically goes down a litany of every year he seems to have had to make an apology. Yeah, 
Yeah. And yeah. Well, I think he then they, carries on. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, like, you know, th there's a really interesting sort of um, split between sort of, you know, politics and technology. I mean, technology right. is, is it, you know, works incredibly fast. Um, it is, you know, by its very nature, disruptive and um, and breaks things because it can, you know, yeah. and because that's how you sort of create new sort of markets. It's how you make money, basically. Right. And politics, obviously, in, in, in its you know, because of the way it's set up, moves very, very slowly. So politics can never keep up with, with technology, and um, and and I think that the two thousand. Why we wanted to concentrate on the sort of two thousand and eighteen. Uh, hearings was because we, we sort of all felt that that was a sort of that was the chance that was the chance to try and sort of put some sort of shackles on mm. on not just Mark Zuckerberg but right. sort of social media and uh, you know and uh, these sorts of platforms more generally and um and they effectively sort of blew it I think and most people would sort of a, a Agree, I think that was sort of plugged in. You know, they found that, that, as you say, that you know the questions were sort of simplistic. They didn't go anywhere. They were given. I think I, I might be wrong about this, but I think they were given four-minute bursts. Yeah. So follow-up questions were really, really difficult. And the other thing is, you had a load of you know American politicians, much like British politicians. You got you know a lot of them showboats, so they they basically right. just sort right. of mm -hmm. you know they go into it with sort of swagger just because they know they're going to be on TV. They're not really interested in sort of you know getting mm -hmm. to the meat of what sort of Zuckerberg's all about. So, so I think it's, you know, I, I, I found it a really, um, I mean, just such a sort of silly, silly yeah. sort of process. And I think he sort of wriggled off the hook. And I think, you know, what we, what was fascinating is that, sort of, you know, a couple of years later, you have the January 6th riots and then, right. you know, everything sort of goes back to, 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 to politics and its inability to be able to sort of grab hold of, you know, some of these, you know, fast moving powerful complicated mm. digital entities and their inability to be able to sort of grasp them and to stop them doing things that are bad for mm. society well it's an interesting yeah i mean i think it's an interesting point too because uh one thing i was gonna i mean you do have uh on in your doc the the whistleblower francis hogan mm. who, who i was actually on capitol hill the week she testified so um in in a in the senate side and people yeah, yeah, were yeah. so excited that she was going to yeah. be there yeah. but again has that been another lost opportunity she she you know she had some very damning testimony but yeah it doesn't seem well, there was like another there's another guy yeah. who came out last um november i think yeah. wall street journal arturo beja i think he's the i can't remember I, Mm. never just Spanish at school but it's a Spanish sounding surname yeah. and um he basically sort of confirmed a lot of what Francis mm. said which is that sort of Facebook's internal studies you know had sort of thrown up a load of concerns right. and and they knew what those concerns were and they um chose to ignore them you know that was that that was the argument that was that was that was made and Arturo basically um confirmed a lot of that and i know that sort of facebook and instagram have, have, have made a lot of changes you know since francis's uh, testimony mm. um but arturo's you know testimony seemed to suggest that the, the risks are still there particularly yeah. for sort of i mean he was fo more focused on on teenage girls using instagram and right how, right um, and and how uh body sexual, images and body and images things. sexual but, harassment and, and and what have you right and um, it sends them to anorexic sites not the good kind you know, not the kind that that's are right about yeah and, and obviously there's yeah. a sort of class action against instagram that's that, that, that's sort of happening to you know to try and to try and i i get it, i mean compensation on one set of level but i think you know yeah. you, but i think that the you know that the the lack i mean you know i mean i think we've all anybody who's got sort of you know kids yeah. is utterly sort of terrified of social media because you know we grew up not with you know without social media and and all of a sudden our sort of kids are sort of negotiating this sort of this what is a pretty horrendous world it seems to me um and um and i think you know are we can we trust these sort of companies to actually sort of look after our kids and who they're sort of hooked up with and and what they they are exposed to you know i'm not really sure actually i don't i don't really think we are and i think that you know yeah. that's the purpose of sort of 
politicians and and that's the purpose of congress and the senate and our parliament and yeah you know yeah. i think we're pretty slow i think we're pretty slow and clumsy actually yeah. well i would agree with you and i agree with you as a as a father myself and my kids if they ever listen to these will say you know accuse me of being a boomer or whatever but i'm not worried about <laughs> i'm not worried about alcohol or drugs or a lot of yeah. things the thing yeah. that worries me most is social media yeah. and yeah. what yeah. that potential harm that it can be done and it's not unsubstantiated we know i mean that's yeah. not the point of this discussion in your film but we do know that there's you know a lot we're starting to get a pretty high stack of academic studies talking about and we have evidence about mm. is, is it just purely coincidental that what we're seeing with sort of mental health and these mm. sort of issues just mm. really mm. have skyrocketed since mm. um you know a lot of this stuff came to the fore, you know, I, you know, it's hard to say, you know, I think most people say it's not. So uh, mm. you're right. Do you just want, we just want our governments to do their jobs, which is often to protect us and to yeah. make sure not to stranglehold this. I mean, the whole point with Facebook and the others is they want, certainly the US based companies all want to do, they all want to self-regulate and they all say yeah, that that's course. the best way to do it. Well, of course they're going to yeah. say that because then they can, they can tr control the narrative, and, and not just the narrative, but how how things uh, are, are done. So, um, you know, it's yeah. it's um, it's well, well, you you and I, it's above our pay grade, I think, to just say how that can be <laughs> how that can be uh, dealt with. But yeah, it does there's something's got to give? It would seem. Well, I think that you know, it's the sort of you know, I think the recent stuff about sort of Instagram about it, the, the stickiness of it for, mm. for for teenagers and the and the idea that you know, I I, I guess the sort of top executives at, at Meta, you know, they know sort of they know exactly how to sort of make these sort of sites. Mm. I mean, I want to say addictive, but that might be sort of pejorative. I think it probably is addictive in in, in certain cases. Well, and, I can, uh, yeah, I can tell you that, um, I mean, so I will say it, uh, you know, I've, uh, I, I've seen, well, I've seen other films that kind of do it in a very creative way, showing how you can make it addictive, uh, mm -hmm. not just, because obviously, as you've already pointed out, uh, and I think it was even in your film, what is it, it's like Facebook discovered like sort of 60% of those who joined right wings web uh, yeah. uh, sites on Facebook, it was because they had been they were pushed in. Just pushed into, in. Yeah. They w didn't yeah. go searching for them. They got uh, drawn in. Um, but yeah, you these algorithms send you little pings, little yeah. notes, and then there's the dopamine or whatever it is in the brain that kicks in from having your you know the screen time and increasing screen time because you're getting the alerts and stuff. It's um, um, you know I think, I, I think it's that's that's that it is a form. You won't want to hear this. Having a son who can't, who has a hard time keeping his phone out of his hand on a hundred yeah, percent of the time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I think it's, it's obvious. Yeah. I should, to be honest, I'll point the finger at myself. I can, I sometimes struggle. You know, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, maybe you, you, know, I get, it, you know, whether, whether, whatever your social media platform of choice. Maybe it's Twitter. Yeah. Maybe you know, I, I, you know, why am I checking Twitter? And there's nothing. You I, know, know, I, you I know, I know, yeah. I know. I mean, just, just go outside and look at the sunset. You know, yeah. just do something, do something yeah. wholesome. My, but that is maybe our generation rather than that. But I, I think it's what's really interesting from a sort of, you know, Facebook and, and Mark Zuckerberg perspective is is just keeping, you know, right from the start. And I don't think this has ever changed. Is that you know his his desire is to sort of keep people on the site. Now, obviously, what comes later is the fact that if you, the longer you're you're on the site, the more information that they can right. suck out of your computer and sell to advertisers right um that comes that comes a little bit later but you know but they're constantly sort of figuring out new ways of just keeping you on their site you know and and going back to the you know the point that you made about um you know the the the, the right wingers you know yeah i mean there are you know the whole sort of idea of sort of facebook groups this this is sort of roger McNamee's theory comes after mm. the sort of 2016 elections and Basically, sort of Facebook is um, is in is in crisis because the brand is stagnating and all this sort right, of stuff. Right. This is this is sort of like, you know according to sort of theory, and um, and so they just constantly have to sort of find ways of connecting people in different ways, um, keeping people on the site. So they invent this thing called sort of Facebook groups, and Facebook groups 
you know, are things that, you know, might sort of breed, I don't know, breeders of cockapoos or something. <laughs> and, and you know, you might be sort of attached, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, Facebook might think, OK, you're interested in breeding cockapoos. Well, you might be interested in breeding rabbits as well, or you might be interested in whatever, you know. And I think that what they what they're able to do is these groups that sort of form these sorts of um, uh, alliances are able to, you know, again, this is the, the theory. So if you are a sort of right wing, um, you know, you, you have sort of ideas that are, say, sort of problematic to the sort of liberal world. Yeah. What you're, you know, you're a MAGA sort of yeah. group you know character for example then what you'll do is you'll be you'll find yourself sort of recommended to um you know to vaccine conspiracy groups mm. and you'll find yourself can you know connected to the nra and what you end up with is a sort of life um as i said b before you know your 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 sort of idea of how sort of life works is sort of reflected mm. and sort of slightly sort of bent and sort of exaggerated and it becomes an echo chamber so that, as I said, we know when the results don't go your way, you're slightly confused because, hang on, that, that's not the way that Facebook tells me that the world works. So, you know, surely something's wrong. Maybe well, the election rigged. I mean, I what know. I, yeah, well, it, indeed, and I can tell you, um, for, for transparency's sake, I have access to two Twitter accounts. One is related to this podcast, and the other is related to some research we I've been doing and have been doing on some some political things. I can tell you that it's like when I get on there, it's like being in two totally different worlds. You know, yeah. there is the world that is, um, let's put it in current terms: Biden is sco coasting to re-election, <laughs> or you know, it's going to you know no problems there. Or the other one that it's. Uh, you know, it's it tends to it's more than just tends to veer well to the right, and you know, and it's just kind of like I you get on these things and you're like, how do these things look like totally? They're two totally different. I know. I'm not saying either one's right. They're just, but they are two totally yeah. different realities. You need to try. You need to try. Sort of. Um, I, I mean, it's interesting. I, my, my Twitter feed is is you know, it, it must be really confused because I sort of follow. You know, I follow people to the hard right and I follow people to the hard left and everything in between, yeah. you know, and I'm, I hope that that somehow sort of confuses the algorithm. I still get some pretty sort of, yeah, I mean, I get some pretty sort of distasteful things sort of, you know, yeah. arriving in my sort of on my phone now and again. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, a, it's a, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Finish that thought. No, I, do, I, I think I think the algorithm is, a, is a, you know, that 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 sort of big breakthrough that sort of Facebook had is mm. the is the breakthrough, I, I yeah. think, you know, curating what people see yeah. and curating um, what they're sort of exposed to. Is, I mean, it, I, I mean, from a business perspective, it's, it's yeah. extraordinary. But um, yeah. I mean, I think it's just, you know, it's just cause, you know. Problems like you know, we, uh, just the most horrendous problems. Really, I mean, you know, many of which well, are still seen. So, so I mean, let's put this in perspective. Because if I've read your filmography correctly, you've got a you know, uh, you've got a long history of profiling some controversial figures. <laughs> you've got uh, yeah, 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 you've yeah. had documentaries about Vladimir Putin and the Assads. And uh, yeah. I mean, how does this rank? This making this film, how does it rank with these? Is this is this been the most challenging of film? Well, one of the most challenging what... films you've made. <laughs> it's, you know what it, it's strange it's quite strange actually because i think whenever you know whenever i set out on a project what you try and do is you try and get a sort of deeper understanding you try i mean obviously it's it's human nature to sort of go in with a yeah. you know with a an idea about what a particular character is like and it's quite nice when you're sort of surprised you know and right. um and, and when i did um I did a series about the Assad family, particularly sort of Asma and, and Bashar. As you said, I did a series about sort of Putin. You go in with sort of try and be as open minded as you can. And you can't yeah. try and say, come on, let's just tell yeah. me what, tell me why Putin's great. Tell me why Assad, you know, I mean, he's, the, the, <laughs> right. what are his qualities? Let's right. just unpack that. I know they, these guys have, you know, have done more damage to the world than anybody should be allowed to do. But, you know, but you, you go in with a sort of slightly sort of open mind and you, and, you know, you do <laughs> actually for Putin. Putin's very difficult to find anybody to say. I mean, apparently he likes tigers, you know. I mean, yeah. like, that's the only person that, you know, would say, you know, any anybody in Russia, you know, I mean, well, he likes tigers. Um, but the thing about sort of but 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 people will 
talk you know and they will mm. sort of they'll they'll sort of you know they, they'll you know you can't it's you know it's it's not horrendously awful trying to sort of drive a story through um mm. the sad family and and through putin because people will talk was actually sort of zuckerberg was um the, the, the zuckerberg film was was extraordinarily difficult getting anybody to talk yeah. um and you know we, we spent a lot of time with these um two brilliant writers from the new york times mm. uh, cecilia king and uh kang and and um uh shira frankel frankel yeah and yeah. um and and, and shira is extraordinary sort of woman really a, a, a terrific journalist and she sort of said to me that it was it was you know she's done in, done done work in extraordinary sort of shitholes around the world you know terrible sort of places where you know ru ru run by sort of dictators and you know horrendous characters and um and she's found it easier getting information and news out of those yeah. places. And, she, and it's fine. She's found it easier getting news out of those places. And she found getting news out of Meta about what sort of Zuckerberg really feels, mm. what he thinks, what he wants, what, you know, all of those sorts of things. Right. And I think that, you know, and, 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 you know, my experience mirrors that it was, it was really tough. Yeah. really 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 tough and it's interesting you say like there's a you know the, the roger roger McNamee character right. who always sort of appears in these films well there's a reason for that because he talks you right, know, right, and, um, right and he's actually got quite a dynamic opinion yeah. and, and this sort of stuff but but it's very very difficult i mean we spent a lot of time I, you know i had so many con conversations that were off the record off the record and then you obviously you know the killer conversation the killer question comes in right. it's like how do you fancy actually doing an interview on camera you know and it's like got to be joking got to be joking mm -hmm. and you know we had you know even journalists you know i interviewed one journalist who was um you know quite quite impressive in the sort of tech world and um and they were hoping to get an <laughs> interview with mark zuckerberg in the next six months and um that journalist i'm not going to say you know well, i'm not going to yeah. go any further but that journalist basically said well i'm not going to say anything controversial about it because otherwise i'm not going to get an interview and you kind of think hang on you're a journalist what do you, <laughs> you just speak your mind just speak your truth you know and, and it's not um, like he's going to say anything anyway when you're in exactly, right? well <laughs> there's that yes yeah. of course yeah. and um you know, and we uh, and we were sort of dealing with you know other you know former Facebook employees, and you know one guy in particular, I was really excited about him because he was so sort of active, and his mind was so sort of you know painted a picture of yeah. of the world of sort of Facebook, which was was just vivid and and so sort of exciting. And I sort of had half a dozen conversations with him, and it get you know it, again you know question mm. finally sort of comes out. So what about that sort of on on camera interview then? What do you do you feel do you, do you, are you up for that? And he said, um, "What well, I've just got a startup business, and I'm hoping that right. um, Meta are going to um, invest in it. <laughs> so of course I'm there." And you think, "Oh, you bastard! You know, really?" <laughs> um, so it's very very difficult, and 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 I think the sort of tentacles, and also I think you know th th they've got incredibly sort of strong lawyers mm. who watch mm. pretty well everything, and um, and, and they're very very protective. They're very what very protective. And isn't it, uh, and last uh, on that point, I mean, isn't it, I think Sheriff Frankel does say in your, uh, towards the end of your doc that uh, there's certainly, you know, these lawyers or whoever they are, the people within the, the company are, uh, it's not even just, uh, you know, on any whistleblowers or, yeah. you know, it's it's not even just um, you losing your job, you, you'll never work in Silicon Valley. You'll never work again. again. I mean, that yeah. was, the, this guy who came out last, last November, um, I mean, we th there's a there's a there's a organisation that sort of helped Francis Haugen, um mm. come out of the closet, so to speak. Right, right. And um, and I mean, one of the <laughs> Francis sort of said, you know, she 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 basically just she had a real wobble because they said, you do realise you'll literally never work in this town again. You'll never work in the technology world ever again. And this was her life. You know, this is what yeah. her, you know, this is what she'd studied for through her sort of adolescence and through her sort of 20s. And, um, you know, to be told that actually, you know, at a pretty modest young age that you're never going to, you know, get to play again is is is, yeah. is utterly terrifying you know but that's the sort of reach you know and i you know I, i'm not sure that sort of facebook is any different from from twitter or many of these other sort yeah. of companies but um but but nevertheless there is a real fear of you know 
people seeing stuff and 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 coming out and sort of speaking out again uh, mm. about it um it, it's interesting because a, a lot of the you know a lot of the you know the people who will um talk about it are you know insiders you get the sort of pr people and this sort of stuff and, and you know i mean from from my taste you don't really get anything right interesting at all you get the sort of company line and, and certainly it, it never really gets the sort of really interesting stuff which is the human interest stuff you know what is it that sort of drives zuckerberg and his um you know his, his sort of his uh, chief executives um you know what is it that drives them what is it that they want out of life what is it they want for the world what is it you know beyond the sort of no nonsense sort of platitudes like mm. you know the sort of slightly connecting the world and yeah. yeah, exactly. Let's all hold hands around the world and, and this kind of stuff, um, which I, I mean, I, I'm, uh, you know, I mean, I think, I'm, you know, I think most of us are pretty cynical about now. Um, yeah. But that's still the that's still the line that, that they, they sort of trot out. Well, that's an interesting point. And maybe we kind of cl partly close on this and that it in that uh, we as a society maybe have grown up as well. Uh, yeah. You know, we've kind of we kind of bought into. I mean, I was I actually wasn't on Facebook until very recently, but uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, for whatever reason. Uh, but you know, so people bought into this idea. Yeah, it's connecting us. It's and and you know, I think you can appreciate certainly from in the film industry. You know, it's this uh, sort of certainly social media and a lot of this stuff that's yeah. happened with technology has really kind of leveled the playing field and made it yeah. more accessible for maybe a lot of people who certainly, you know, budding yeah. documentarians and stuff like that. But I think we've now turned, everyone's become, I mean, because I'm a Gen Xer, so I'm naturally cynical. I mean, I think it's, uh, <laughs> um, you know, everyone's kind of yeah. finally coming around. My w way of thinking is that, no, 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 let's face it. It's just a business. And it's just a business. I'm it, afraid just, it is. You know, and um, so with that in mind, I mean, where is he, what's his, what's his, I mean, is it's, the the upshot of the film is that we really still, I mean, I'm not, I we still, I know, watch I know, it. We I still know, don't I know, know I mean, who, what it's... drives him and what, what, what he's all about, do we? Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I, you know, and I, you know, I mean, that is the, that's the big, <laughs> that's my fail, I'm afraid. But then I don't think, it, I, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I'm not sure anybody setting out to make this film would, would mm. be able to, at, th at this stage, you know, to come to any sort of deeper conclusions. I mean, you know, he, he's, um, you know, you. I mean, he's. You know, it's. It's. He's sealed off. I mean, if you're making a, a sort of, if you wanted to make a new film about sort of Vladimir Putin now, you know, after, you know, oh, gosh, yeah. in the, you, know, you, you could, you know, I mean, all you could do is sort of guess at his sort of intentions, and I, and, yeah. you know, and obviously, you know, you hear about, you know, from from, from Z, you know, just to sort of parallel that with the sort of Zuckerberg experience obviously he's not a putin clearly not a putin, right right nowhere right. near but just, just in terms of, sort of similar sort of filmmaking challenge you know you, you've got people who you know he'll sort of come out and he'll do his sort of as i said sort of 30 second um you know news pieces with sort of tame journalists but you're never going to be able to go off message and be able to say right. so hang on just a second what about this what are you going to do about that aren't you worried about that you know just you know he just doesn't do those sorts of interviews anymore and all of his sort of close cohorts are exactly the same i mean you know musk as i said you know just started off by sort of comparing him, him with musk you know i mean musk has just got sort of verbal diarrhea you can't shut him up about anything right in the you know seemingly and um i mean you, can, and you, you know you can guess a lot of his motivations as well because of you know how much stuff is out there right zuckerberg you know, I mean, he is. You know, there's something sort of slight. Yeah, I mean, he's he's he he's opaque. He's mm. opaque. I mean, you know, people say, you know, people who you know have met him, you know, and, and worked with him and come out. So he's a really nice guy. You know, he's a really nice guy. He loves his kids. He loves his wife. He's totally faithful. He's you know, he is actually a pretty good guy. But from a you know, I, I'm not sure you can sort of argue that he's he's business has been wholly good for the world and and how much yeah. responsibility he takes how much yeah. he's driven that um you know i think you know you just only you can only guess that because i mean what, what else can you do really because you yeah. can't get as i said you can't get under the bonnet really i mean about that point about his family i mean it's also and as you point out early on and others have as, as well but you do well i mean it, 
you know, yeah, he he posts on, you know, he's got family shots on his on, on his Facebook account and things. But you know, he recognizes that they've got their photo, you know, face recognition software built in as well. So you're never going to see any of his children's faces because he's. It's almost like the things he used. To, again, a totally kind of in a different way, but things you used to hear about Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs and other people would never let their kids have uh, smartphones, you know? So, yeah. you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of funny one, but I guess the reality is, and he's also still so relatively young that yeah. his legacy, everything, you know, we don't know what it's going to be, is it yet? You know, it's, it's not. No, any... you don't know. I mean, I, you know, it, 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 I mean, the, the the engineering achievement is extraordinary. You know, I mean, I know that's a really boring thing to say, but the, you know, <laughs> but the engineering achievement of yeah. actually building something that can support, you know, you know, hundreds of millions, billions of of, of people around the world, yeah. and you know, have you know, communications between people on, you know, people yeah. in, in sort of split seconds, lickety split, you know, really amazing, um, and it's a truly sort of extraordinary sort of achievement. Um, but, you know, it's the, you know, just because you could do it, maybe, you know, you should be asking whether you should do it a lot yeah. of the time. You know, I think it's that old sort of Jeff Goldblum sort of um, warning, I think. Right, uh, right, I, right, indeed. I, I suspect that, you know, yeah. I, I suspect he's still, you know, absolutely adamant that Facebook is a force for good. And I think clearly it has done a lot of good and it's, you know, and we've all had a bit of fun with it in the past, um, you know. But well, it'll be, it's yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens because we know no one under 40 gets on Facebook. So it's like, uh, you know, how things evolve. Okay, so that's why he buys up Instagram and who know, who yeah. else, who knows what else he'll buy. But uh, so, I, I mean, our time is def is is coming to a cl uh, close, Nick. But I just, uh, before, really before we go, so I've really enjoyed it too. Uh, before we go, though, uh, so who's next on your list? I mean, you've you've done Putin, <laughs> you've done Zuckerberg, you've done the yeah. Assads, you've done Gosen. What's uh, yeah. any anyone next in your I'm doing, uh, I'm, doing I'm, I'm 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 NDA'd up, I'm afraid on on, on the next one, but, okay. but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. It's Please a do. it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a film for a streamer that is um I think is you know it, it, it is really interesting, but it's not digging the dirt. It's not a uh, it's not a man who's it's it's actually sort of. I, I, decided sort of you know these big sort of alpha men you know i, I do need a bit of a <laughs> right. break from them really because yeah. they're, they're quite they, they you know they do sort of they do get under your skin a little bit so i'm doing something very different now but i'd like to there's 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 many there's many profiles i'd love to do about these sort of um you know these big sort of alpha guys i do think they are they, they they're you know they're just endlessly fascinating they do daft things as well ultimately they always do daft things you know, um, and I think that makes their stories, you know, even. It, and more, maybe that's the other thing about Zuckerberg is he hasn't done, uh, by comparison, he hasn't maybe necessarily done something as daft as the others. Uh, if you, no, 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 no. I, I, yes, God, yeah. Forget, yeah. Let's not let's not even sort of like try and mix Zuckerberg up with the other guys. <laughs> but the um, no, but the, you know, but the, the you know the the whole sort of cage fighting nonsense and the, the weird sort of obsession about fitness that he puts on his own feed. I mean, right. I find that all a bit weird, to be perfectly yeah. honest. Um, uh, so, so, what you know, drives out? Really what what what, what is it about the? You, you're drawn to them, like um, I don't know, um, uh, moths to a flame or something. But it's like, but what is it? What? Well, I, so, yeah, I mean, I just I, yeah. What is it about the alpha? What is what's? Is there something that? As much as what is a sort of unifying characteristic, you think? God, and again, you know, we're not we're not equating anyone. Let's face it, you know. But just yeah. there are, but you know, to get to this point where these people are, you, you haven't done anything on Donald Trump, but you know, what is it? You know, mm. tr Trump. I do well. I do like people? films about men. I, I, I've got to say, I mean, this is an unfashionable view, but I do like films about men because I do I do think men just do daft, daft things. things. <laughs> You know, and I think, yeah. you know, no matter how sort of, you know, how successful they can be, how they sort of build up their lives, how smart they are, they are on the way up. You mm -hmm. know that they're one stupid decision away from, um, right. you know, from disaster or, or not even disaster, but just just actually, uh, you know, the beginning of the next yeah. act of the story. Right. So you've got you've got, you know, these <laughs> they do give you sort of natural, dramatic right. uh, story arcs. Um the gifts that well, keep on giving 
They are, yeah, yes, yeah, of course. They they really are, and they're, te- and they're yeah. you know most of the t- you know a lot of them are te- truly terrible people, um, and you know, and obviously they're interested in that. But I think just from a sort of human perspective, just that yeah. sort of you know the hubris that goes along with you know great success a lot of the time is it makes the makes the stories just actually I mean they're not easy stories to tell, but they they're just fascinating stories to tell. It's a frailty of human nature, really. <laughs> Well, I hope you keep telling those stories, and we'd love to have you on again uh, when once you do uh, uh, bring the next project to uh, uh, to the screen. And uh, just to remind our listeners and viewers, we've been talking with award-winning filmmaker Nick Green, uh, director of Zuckerberg, King of the Metaverse, um, currently showing on Sky TV here in the UK, and it's going to be near you if you're not in the UK or its territory or Sky's territory. So do check it out well worth uh, your 90 minutes and uh, Nick it was great chatting with you lovely and to hope meet to ha- you yeah and hope to have you on again sometime yeah really enjoyed it best of luck with the with everything else thanks again for joining us on Factual America a big shout out to everyone at Intersound Audio in York England for their great studio and fine editing and production skills A big thanks to Amy Ord, our podcast manager, who ensures we continue getting great guests onto the show and that everything otherwise runs smoothly. Finally, a big thanks to you, our listeners. Please keep sending us feedback and episode ideas, whether it is on YouTube, social media, or directly by email. And please also remember to like us and share us with your friends and family, wherever you happen to listen or watch podcasts. This is Factual America, signing off. You've been listening to Factual America. This podcast is produced by Alamo Pictures, which specializes in documentaries, television, and shorts about the U.S. for international audiences. Head on down to the show notes for more information about today's episode, our guests, and the team behind the podcast. Subscribe to our mailing list or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Be the first to hear about new productions, festivals showing our films, and to connect with our team. Our homepage is factualamerica.com.